Hey guys, my name is Sidi Egg and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2 where we are building our very own transportation company in the United Kingdom. You're now witnessing the train leaving the big smoke of London as we are now uh, transporting ourselves all the way to Cambridge on our very first passenger route. Now we decided to go for passenger route from the, from the get-go. Normally I always start with cargo and while it has been very, very expensive and it's put myself into 9 million in debt in terms of our loan, only time will tell if this is going to pay off. Uh, we've got a lot of expansions to do. We've got a lot of uh, kind of debt to repay and uh, we've got a lot of passengers to also transport as well. So we're back for a second episode. You guys seem to love the first episode so much. If you are enjoying this and want to see more of this series, then make sure you smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new around here, guys, so you get notified when more episodes of this transportation uh, company in the UK comes out for Transport Fever 2. But this is our only route that we've created. From London to Birmingham via Cambridge. Now, it was very expensive, and we've only recently just got the London to Cambridge route on a double line system. After Cambridge, it goes into a single line because we couldn't afford to upgrade the whole route. We have a double line system just here where they're able to kind of pass one another, and it's all single line directly into Birmingham. So we need to upgrade that eventually all to double line so we can have more stuff on the go. Now, what are we going to be doing in this episode? Well, we need to turn this whole line from Birmingham to London, double line. I want to add a couple of extra carriages to the trains, the passenger trains right now, so they can transport more, thus making more. And I also, maybe if I can afford to do it as well, think about extending the passenger line in different directions so we can cover a few more cities. Now, as of right now, Birmingham and London are quite big, so I don't technically need to feed these cities just yet to grow them. But there is lots of ways in which we can make money off the passengers in general anyway. There's no point in me bringing more passengers to the train station because the train station themselves have an abundance of passengers. I can't transport them because the trains don't come as frequent and they can't carry as much. So, how much is it going to cost me then to add on to both of these trains, if I edit them, an additional carriage? So... Passenger wise, we now have brand new carriages that we can um, kind of uh, implement to it. We've been using these coach ones, which carry six. These uh, Bavarian ones carry eight. Now they are only 60, 78, 90 big ones more than the previous one, which carry two more passengers. Uh, but it's a case of how much are these going to be. So if I wanted to add one onto you, one onto you. It's going to cost me 466 big ones, which will give me an additional eight passengers to both trains. I won't delete any of these carts. There's no point in me doing that just yet. But let's modify anyway. And let's have a little bit of a fast forward. So these trains can definitely pick up a few more people right now. So now it can go from 60 to 68 in passengers. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but over the grand scheme of things, it will add up. It will all add up. Now, this is the problem we're going to have. This train might have to stop here and wait for this train to pass, which is why it's more important that we get the extended line in. But my new lines that I'm going to build, I've been thinking, I'm going to build a line that goes from Birmingham here down into Oxford into Reading because I've got a bigger picture that I want to build for my transportation network. I eventually want to run a line from Canterbury to Brighton to Bournemouth down to Exeter, Exeter sorry, into Plymouth. So we have this southern rail line going across here. Uh, we're going to extend the London line to connect into it here into a V. So that's how we kind of transport between those two. I'll do one from Birmingham coming down here to connect to there into there. And then we're going to do another one on the Birmingham side here going down this way into Bristol down to here and down to there. So I've got all these lines that eventually crisscross our southern route. But... Again, to do that, I need cash, <laughs> and that's really, really expensive. So this train's on its way in right now with 68 passengers on board. Uh, the train has just arrived in Cambridge right now with 68 passengers on board. So you won't see the big benefit just yet until they both unload and fully load back up in London and in Birmingham. Because they're carrying a few passengers from Cambridge, which is a shorter route. They'll get, and there's 263 people right now waiting in Birmingham to be picked up. So this is where this train... Should have a full load of people going from Birmingham. So how much does this make when it kind of now unloads the 68 passengers? 
So how much do, do we know? Oh, you, you're just not going to tell me? Is that how it is? You're just not going to tell me right now? But that's now on its way back. So where I can afford it, we'll try and add a few more carriages to it. So like I said before, there's no point me adding to the vehicle route on the buses here. Because uh, there's just too many passengers to be transported in general. Right, will we find out from this train right now? 344 big ones. Not bad, not bad. So nice little chunk of change right there. Let it do what it's got to do. But we need to find alternative ways to make a bit of cash. So... I think once they both get to Cambridge right there, there's definitely room for me to add an additional carriage to both of these trains. And I think at that point there, we'll leave it as that. So this is our chart right now, the span of 17 years. I don't want to do it like that. We'll do it over, we'll do it over the 10 year mark. You can see that we've lost money consistently, and then we, we slowly started just creeping, making a bit of cash. Lost money on this one because I just spent all that money in buying those two new carriages. So it just shows you the difference between making money and losing money at this point. It is a fine margin. A very fine margin. So that, they'll be both able to unload at the same time here. Because of the, uh, the perfect timings in which they uh, approach this station. So in comes the one. Only 14 big ones because there's not many passengers who want to get off just there. And we should see the same story for this one as well. Not many passengers want to get off here. Okay, a little bit more. 43,000. So that's not too bad. So once they both reach their ends, then we'll truly see a big chunk of cash come in. Buy additional carriages. Even more cash. Right, so our lines in general then. You can see where we're currently making money and all that kind of jazz. Uh, making the most money off the train routes. And, um, wow, okay. So the frequency in which we're coming in with this London loop right now. We could potentially add more vehicles to this. There's nothing stopping us doing that. There's no point in terms of bringing people to the train station because you lose out there. But there's definitely wiggle room to add more vehicles to these routes. So why not do that? Let, let's, let's just add a, a, an extra vehicle or two. Um... Uh, We'll add an additional... Do you know what? I can't even afford it. That's how crazy this is right now. I can't even afford it. So it's a case of, do I buy more vehicles or more carriages? We're going to make more money on the carriages. So maybe that is the way to go forward. So we've got 300,000 big ones coming in. Wait for this train to get in just here. We'll quickly pause and add more carriages to the trains. So come on, choo-choo. Come on, choo-choo. You're almost there. You're almost up the hill. It's a big hill to incline, but it is what it is at this point. So this train's now coming in. Making 409 big ones, which we can now jump onto the line, manage the vehicles, edit both of them to add a Bavarian carriage to both ones. 466 big ones, and all of a sudden now... We've gone from 68 passengers to which we can now carry to 76. Small little improvements like that make a huge difference, guys. They really do make a huge difference. So, that is now all done. And I think we can now just kind of play the waiting game for us to, for the money to kind of slowly sink into our bank account and us to then think about doing some sweet, sweet expansions elsewhere. So, for me to double up on this line, uh, it shouldn't be too much money. But I've also got to create some type of a V now at this point if I'm bringing in a train line into Oxford. Now, do I bring the train line this side or this side? Because I've got to think about how we turn into here and bring it into, into Reading down here. Now, Reading is we're going to bring the line down and it's going to V into here. But we're going to take it as an end route into Bournemouth. That's what we're going to do. The end route for this London one would be Brighton. And that will then crisscross the line going along here. So at any point, anybody can get off, go straight to Birmingham, straight to London, or anywhere else. That's how it's going to pretty much work. So, in reality, we want the Reading one to also come along down here. I might use this one here, this road going down. So the train station is a slight hill here, isn't there? Yeah. So the train station will either come around there down a hill or just slightly cut down here. It's only a short distance, so you won't really make much cash between the two. Um, but then in case, do I bring it in this side or a bit further down to turn into this side? 
the further away it is, the more money we're going to make. But I'm just kind of thinking about the logistics of the bends of the train tracks. I, oh, then again, this is another kind of um, big one as well. Look at the, the, the gradient there versus the gradient over here. I think it might be better to bring it this way and then bring it, swoop it round and down and in. Yeah, that would be the better way. So on the left of Oxford, on the left of Reading is where we're going to put those two stations. Okay, that's pretty good then. So we've, we've got an idea to how it's going to work. And we've semi got some type of an idea. Now there's a train coming into Birmingham right now and the train's on the way down into London. I expect us to lose just as much money this time because we spent it all on those two brand new carriages, but the revenue should be a little bit higher. But it all depends on where they crisscross here because if they get caught up here, it slows down the revenue coming in. So it's not one of those things, you, do, you just can't win either way, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, anyway, forget that for just a moment. Train track. So we're going to go over a passenger train station. And we'll go, we'll keep it at 160 because there's no need for us to go too big just yet. And there's something, if I placed it just there, is a little bit too far out for reaching the main part of the town. Now I can delete this road here, which you don't really lose much out of it, which will allow us to slightly build a train station just there. Now, what I'm looking at as well is how much it digs in deep to the terrain around. If I went a little bit higher, ooh, it's a bit. It's going to be a bit tough either way. So I reckon we're going to have to build like some type of a road connection just here, just like that to kind of cut us through. And then we base the train station off just here. So it's going to dig in deep and be a bit elevated on there because we're on a slight hill. Now there's nothing stopping me from also building it at a slight angle. But either way, you, 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 something's going to be negative towards us. So, would it help us to build Oxford train station at a slight angle? Will it ruin the city's aesthetics? Uh, you could argue, yeah, no, maybe so. It doesn't really matter. But I need 180,000 to be able to build that. So, is there any trains coming in anywhere at the moment? We have a train. The two trains are in Cambridge. So we just got to wait for that one to get to London. That'll be the quicker one to get there. And I can place this in. And we get some type of an idea of how we're going to connect it. So again, it's pretty much the waiting game all over again. Revenue is definitely on the rise. And it should be on the rise even more with the amount of passengers we're now transporting. You see, we've uh, had a big spike there. I'm not sure where that big spike came from. But again, nice general growth in terms of revenue. Nice general growth. But we're just on the cusp of like making money, losing money, making money, losing money. But I've spent a million on expansions already, so that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. So trains coming in. We should get I don't think I'm gonna earn enough right now to build this. I think it's gonna be enough to just pay our debts, which it is. So you gotta wait for the Birmingham one to come in. But then again, I'm thinking, if I spend my money on the expansions there, then I'm kind of losing the ability to expand even further elsewhere. It's a vicious cycle, isn't it? I reckon we think about transporting some cargo first. That's my thought process. That is my thought process right now. Now, we know we're going to have... We know we're going to have, at some point, a route going along the south. So one nice semi-setup... A route there but then incorporate a train line between the the saw forest and the sawmill down here in hopes that that would generate us some additional cash what do you reckon to that that could be a possibility it could be a possibility but again that's easier said than done in many regards in many many regards so we'll use a cargo train station here and we'll try and keep this semi separate from everything else so you'd want it about here this cargo train station but we're going to also create the bypassing platform for it as well but like many of things i don't technically have the ability to afford it this is cutthroat right now isn't it guys this feels real cutthroat right now 
So I've got to wait for these trains to scooter through. I could get another loan. Do you know what? I'll get one more loan, right? Because it's going to cost me 10000 to borrow another million. Now, the route that this is going to make will be more than 10000 okay? That's what I'm saying to myself. Actually, I borrow half a million and we'll go from there. So we're going to have to pay back our debts as soon as possible. But let's throw you in just there. i got to connect up via a road to make it worth our while. And we do have a slight gradient bump here. So if I just connect to this road for now. It gets cheaper the flatter you utilize it. So what we're saying about there. Would that be better? I need a train to arrive again. Right, the Birmingham train's almost there. Do you know what? Forget it. Another million. Uh, well, I've now borrowed an additional million on top of what I started with. I might do an end. No, I don't want to do an end one because you can take the wood wherever you want to take it. So if I just placed in you just here. Or a little bit up the hill. A little bit up the hill would be better, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right, just there. So train track wise then, this is where we have to then think about the bypass inside of it. So track wise, if I just built that there for now, and that one, because that's where we connecting up more than anything, is here and here. And then we just kind of create a little V in. That, that's literally all we do. But I don't want to spend money and waste money on those routes just yet. Now if I drag this the whole way to up here half a million it reckons that is going to be half a million now can we reduce those costs uh, the answer is yes dramatically if you build it in smaller stages half a million to literally just over a hundred thousand now, granted, the gradients will be slightly different, but I can't, I can't really argue about the gradients at this point because it costs money to reduce them. <laughs> so that runs into there, and that will be used as our, one of our main lines from Brighton to Bournemouth, and then we just kind of bring in where we need it. So I bring this out slightly, and then cut you in. And then from there, we'll do a crisscross. That's how it works. And then literally implement the same thing down here. So bringing you in from there, perform my little crisscross. There we go. So we're just now going to set up the road connection. Which I'll utilize via a dirt road. So that comes into like that. That connects to there. As simple as that train station is now connected to here. And then we apply the same logic just here. So if I delete you. And then just first bring this up to here. And then bring you connecting back in there. So we're all back to normal. That there should be connected to here. Yep, both stations are now working extra crispy. So, all I'm going to do is create a new line, which is from here to here. Now, we can barely see that. I'll change it to brown for our wood. We need to make sure they use both sides of the, uh, the tracks. So, we'll set up some signals. So, a signal just there. And I'll do one just here. So, that will now utilize both sides. It's only going to be one train. That's really all it's going to be. Oh, new... Um, horseback and carts coming in right now so we should be able to upgrade our bus routes i'm calling them bus routes even though they're not buses at the moment uh, so that'll be interesting so building wise now we're gonna need a little bit of a depot which i'll throw in i'll throw in just there just for the sake of it and that new route let me just quickly edit it so i'll call it the bournemouth so, born male, if I can spell Bournemouth right, 
Bournemouth. No, mouth. Yeah, it is mouth. Bournemouth Wood is what I call it. <laughs> Bournemouth Wood. There we go. Easy enough. Now, I'm not going to be able to afford this train. Again, I know this. But... There's only, oh, there's actually two engines we can go for now. Go for the cheaper one. And then for the wagons, we need the sidecar with stakes. So how many of these can I add on in reality? I could add on two and not be able to afford it. Okay. So are the trains on the way? There's a train on the way to Cambridge right now. Where's the other train? Oh, they're waiting at the crisscross. Okay. So we'll come back to that in just a moment then. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But I'm hoping we can see some type of a benefit right now going back and forth. Again, I've implemented the train route because it's an investment into the future. And we also have the ability to continue the train line into Brighton and up to Canterbury, but then take a little cut off to bring the, uh, the timber into the machines or the tools factory over here. So... It all works out pretty well. We've kind of got the idea of where we want to navigate with it. It all comes down to money at the end of the day. So once that train's dropped off in Birmingham over here, once that train over here is dropped off in London, that should give us adequate amount of money uh, to be able to buy a train with a decent amount of carriages. That will work out quite well. I'm just hoping this gradient going down is not too much. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, here it looks quite bad. <laughs> okay. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? That really is going to be interesting. So train's about to head into Birmingham. Drop a, a load of folios. How is the money doing anyway? So it's hovering about the same. The spikes depend on how much money I spend. Right, that train's on the way in right now, so we'll get building or we'll slightly get ready to buy this. So steam, cargo, flat car with stakes. So if I go for... 20. Let me see how much that train makes me gets into London. I don't think I'll be able to buy 20. No. Wow. Can't even buy. Wow. Okay. So I'll just go for 12 then. What are we saying? So my capacity is 12, which is literally nothing. Absolutely nothing right now. So set that route on its way. It's only three carriages. So we've got a hope. Is that fully loaded? Oh, snap, it is. So we've got a hope then that this can make some considerable amount of money. I need to work on this route and add more and more to it as time goes on. So what is the gradient like? It's doing 24, it's down to 23, down to 22, 20, 19, 18. Do you know what? That's not bad. I don't think we need to be worried that much. I don't think we need to be worried that much. 52 big ones. That's actually pretty good. But obviously, it loses money now heading back. But it's a case of... That's actually really good, considering it's only three carriages. Okay, we're definitely expanding and adding on to that right now. There's a lot of wood to kind of be delivered as well. So, picking up again. Heading back. So, I think this will make a small profit from the get-go. But the problem is, the maintenance of all of this here means, overall, this route does lose money. It doesn't take into account this on this. It's just the train on its own. So, yeah. So, we made money. I made profit in our first year. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right, two trains, one to London, one away to Birmingham. So as soon as we can, we will upgrade this train to add a few more carriages onto it, a few more carts. And that should be quite profitable. It should be a nice little grind to make some big cash. So get ready to edit this vehicle. So one, two, three... I'll, I'll aim for free, if possible. 
Go away for this Birmingham train to come in. I reckon we'll only get two. I'll get ready to remove just in case. Yeah, def it's definitely going to be two. Maybe only be one. Takes a while for that Birmingham train to get in, doesn't it? Right. It's only one, but I'll take one. I'll take the additional one. So, gotta wait for the train to go back again before it picks up the additional four wood that it's able to. So, in the train comes. Now, the more carriages they add on to it, the slower it will start to become as it goes up that hill. We gotta remember that, okay? We gotta remember that. But in terms of finances, this is definitely making money. So this is something that we can definitely work towards. I don't want to get any more loans out because it just costs us more cash. We'll try and do it with what we make. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that anyway. Trains now on the way back. It's going to Birmingham. It's going to Cambridge. So for the first time, that's now picking up 16. And keep an eye on the speed as it goes up the hill as well. So they're still waiting there. This is what I've got to get, expand to get rid of this problem. So 16, 15. And it's now about to pull into the station. Yeah, we can manage that at this moment. So from 52 to what now? I don't know what that was. It didn't pop up like it normally does. But um, big finances coming in. Big finances. Alright, do you make any more cash over here? 60 big ones. Not many people want to go to Cambridge. So you can see the cost of the maintenance of all of this. It is a bit crazy. But train to Birmingham, train to London, should be able to afford a couple more carriages onto our wood route. How much does this make now? Wow, nearly half a million. That's really good. Where's the train for London? Okay, that's on the way in right now. We should get ready to edit this. So edit, one, two, three, potentially. Potentially three. Waiting for the London train to arrive in. No, I can get two. Two more, wow. Okay, that's a big game changer. That's definitely a big game changer right now. Two more coming in. So I'm literally, as soon as I make the cash, I'm spending the cash. So train coming in, picking up now a load of wood, 24 on board. So let's see what we get out of this then. So will it do the same speed up the hill? We're going to find out. So we dropped down to about 14 when we got to this point just there. And I expect it to do the same, if not a little bit less. 13, 12, 11. Yeah, okay. We definitely... That's to the point where it's like... Mm, okay, Shadiak. This is uh, a little bit too much. Maybe not add any more onto this. But how much do we make from this train now? A hundred grand a piece. I'll take that. I'll definitely take that right now. Yes, please. Right, let that... Like, literally, to grind itself out. So nice little route right there, making big stonks. Big, big, big stonks. And uh, is it worth me putting a third train on this passenger route? Because I'm going to have the same problem like before. Like, the more carriage you add to it, the slower the trains do become. I could change the engines. Get out of here, Siri. Uh, I could change the engines on them, but again, that costs money. Where I can just invest in getting a third train on the go. But then again, that would cost some serious cash as well. 
Like, if I was to edit this vehicle, uh, how much of them steam trains? 200,000. That's 300. It does cost a little bit more money to run. It is a little bit quicker. It has a little bit more traction. But it's money at the end of the day, isn't it? It all comes down to money. Yeah. Okay, then. Let's forget that about that for a moment. What's the uh, the road vehicle saying? Is it now a potential thing that we could look towards upgrading the road vehicles? If I replace them... So, these carry four, these carry five, but these are steam-powered. Now, to replace all those, and cost us a quarter of a million, which is actually not too bad. It makes them the same speed, but has more power. They do produce a little bit more emissions, but they can, they can all carry one more person. But with it, you got to spend a little bit extra money. Hmm. It's a tough one. It's a tough one to think if I should go down that route. It does mean you make more per vehicle. I think I'm going to do it. Right, I think I'm going to do it. Only problem is, I ain't got the money. <laughs> that should be my catchphrase of the... I should have a catchphrase every episode. Today it is, I don't have enough money. <laughs> that is my catchphrase of today. Right, these two trains should crisscross one another without having to slow down. Trains on the way. Oh, actually no, that one's taking a little bit longer to get up the hill. Okay, this one will slow down. This is what we, we need to avoid. How much would it be to run that train line, anyway? Well, let, me, let me just say I just did it here. A little over 100 grand? Yeah. Yeah. But I want, I want to do this first. I think that would be pretty cool to do it. Right, how's the train doing anyway down here? You still making big stacks? Of course you are. Of course you are, baby. That's good to see. Uh, train's on the way to Birmingham, where we'll uh, pretty much pay off our debts. And the train to London will be our profit. The train to London will be our profit. So, what's it like on the tables anyway? If I'm not spending money, so two hundred thousand a year is what we're making in profit. Okay, we'll be three hundred thousand. We paid off our debts, but I'm not going to borrow any money. Except, well, one because I can't, and two, I really need to start repaying it. I really do need to start repaying it, and I got to st stop spending money in our, in our investments as well. Well, then again, you need to spend money to make money, so it's just one of those things, I assume. Right. All the vehicles, replace them with you. Can I afford to do it when the train gets into London? Yes, I can. We've now switched to steam vehicles. We've now switched to steam, baby. So there's one of my vehicles right there. Which can pick up some extra people. And hopefully make some extra cash. So that line in general, if I click on the line itself and finances, you can see it's been pretty consistent. Maybe going down slightly, that could be down to the fact that traffic build up as the city gets bigger and bigger. I don't know. But we'll see what happens as time goes on right now with the income versus expenses. And if it turns out we make more money from these vehicles, we'll then apply the same vehicles to Birmingham as well. That should work out pretty favorable um okay ships are coming in as well we got ships to play new train wow okay that's expensive though uh a new horse and cards as well with uh sidings they're faster than my steam vehicles <laughs> but they're i think they're like the cargo the new cargo vehicles yeah 
We should also think about that as well. That's another thing that we can think about is doing a couple of little cargo routes with a couple of little horse and carts. So something like this, like oil to there, could be a nice little way to make a couple of pennies. What we're we saying about that? That could be that could work out fairly well. Um, is that on, I got this new thing as well? You got to check the gradients. I think that's okay, right? I mean, it does go slightly uphill, but I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. That's the thing now. You got to check gradients. <laughs> Uh, that's the, that's the, the unique problem you have in the UK is how you don't realize how bumpy and how hilly and mountainous. No, I won't say mountainous, but how hilly and uneven. It's not as flat as you think for a small place. Right. Train coming into London. Train coming into Birmingham right now where we make the sweet, sweet cash. So we made money on the previous two years, but I've just spent a huge amount of cash. Oh, okay, I made some. Money. We're probably gonna make money on this year as well. So train to London has arrived. See the finance. You just have this random year where you get a bit more. I think that's maybe where you you kind of catch it where it does multiple journeys. But it's a steady increase, but so are the expenses. Now, this line in terms of finances, yeah, it's higher in revenue, but so are the expenses. But I think it weighs itself out, so that's that's pretty good as well. I don't think you can argue much with that. I don't think you can. All right, trains made it to Birmingham. Very good, very good, very good. Right. I don't know if to add more to this or replace the engine. I don't know yet. I don't know. So, I think the, the the most easiest thing to do would be to put a new train on the passenger route. Just because we have that amount of demand already. And we're almost set up to where we can have it going back and forth. I know I've still got to do this. But I think I might save the money up right now to buy a third train. That might be the way to go forward. How much is it to have this building as maintenance how much was that then I can't really tell I don't think it's a lot but I'm just wondering if it's worth getting rid of my depots as I'm not buying any new vehicles on them at the minute I don't truly know just yet but anyway the details on this train Definitely start to earn more money as you add the extra carriage, but also the maintenance is a little bit higher. But I don't think it really balances out very well. Like, I think we're still making the same profit margin. Right, this uh, route right now in terms of finances. Definitely making more money. They're arriving very frequent. It's all working out. It is working out very well. I'm quite impressed with it. Just keep coming frequent, frequent, frequent. Just watching my money go up. So these, like the bus routes and the route down here, the money they earn pretty much pay the bills. It's not until we get the big trains coming in where you get the big stonks being made. But then again, thinking about it, we are starting to lose the amount of passengers in London here. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing right now. We might get to the point where there's no passengers to carry back from London. Same with Birmingham. Please don't say we're losing the demands. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it might be a case we need to change where the bus stations are. Because that's the catchment area here. We need to kind of be slightly outside of the catchment area, don't we? 
So if I had a bus stop then, let's say, over here. And then a bus stop over here. And then we change these routes. So if I delete this one. And I delete this one. And then on that route, the Birmingham loop, manage the line. So it's now all adjusted, right? Let me change the color of it so we can see it a bit better. Let's go red. So Mill Lane, and it goes to School Lane. So Mill Lane, we add the station to there. And uh, Windsor Road back to Mill Lane, we add another station to go there. So push it out a little bit further so we, we got a little bit more people to pick up. But I reckon it might be worth as well doing a counterclockwise route as well. That might be a pretty good idea. So if I add bus stops going the opposite way, which I can't afford again. Damn it, game. Why you do this to me? Because the same thing might apply to London, where these are a bit too close, so spread them out a bit. I might do that in London first. Because it makes larger money the further away they are. So trains come into London, which will enable me to be able to afford some of this. So one just there. There's a stop there, but I'm also going to incorporate a stop over here. Yeah. So it's a case of deleting this one. That's now gone. And then this loop here. Manage the line. So change the color of this as well. So we can see it a bit better. So after Stanley Road. We go to this stop over here. And then after Manor Road, which goes to Stanley Road, we add a new stop in to go just here. So a little bit skew if, but it should be all right. How far does the train station actually cover? Okay, so that, that yeah, that stop is still okay. We're still quite happy to go with that stop. So it just means that if they pick up people here and they want to go to over there, it makes more money because of the distance. But it does mean we need more vehicles on the route. You know what I mean? So, if I buy some more vehicles now. So, how many can I potentially afford? Eight. Now, that seems like a considerable amount of vehicles. But the amount of people that we're going to have on some of these stops that we've got to shift is quite astronomical. It really is. So a lot more vehicles now scheduling out from here. Which will only then bring more passengers to the train station. And it's, a, it's another logic that we have to apply to uh, Birmingham as well. we just got to pick more and more people up. Meaning we need more and more vehicles. So I've got to replace these first with our engine routes. Our steam powered ones. And then we'll get more people moving. But it is starting to get a little bit more congested in London. So the times it takes people, or the vehicle, the buses, well, the well, yeah, they are. I'm, I'm calling them buses. I don't care no more. The time it takes the buses to get from stop to stop might be a little bit longer than usual, especially crossing this bridge. But hopefully we can carry more people anyway, and hopefully it, it, in return, makes us more money. That's all we can do. We, we're now technically trying to feed our train stations a bit more. So you can now see our buses all skadoodling around. So we should see the expenses go quite high until they've done a couple of first, you know, full circulations and they're into the groove of it, where we'll see the difference in our profit increasing as well. Yes. Right, train coming in. 400,000 big ones. That's what I like to see. 
train leaving Birmingham. Now, can I afford to upgrade all the Birmingham vehicles? So, select the loop, manage the vehicles, select them all, replace with these. Bam. Yes, I can. So, they're now all being replaced. I haven't added any additional on. They've just been replaced. So, hopefully the same thing happens here where we see a little bit more money coming in. So, finance in general. We've always been making profit, which is really good, apart from this one. Not quite sure what happened there. Oh, that's when I edited where the stops were. So the fact that I can now carry an extra person becomes a big help. We'll see what this next year here brings for us. Before we go ahead and add a few additional vehicles on the route. So every, everything helps right now. Everything helps, baby. Eventually, when I got another train station on the left side of Birmingham, I'm going to use trams to connect everything up. I think that'll be pretty cool. Right, nice little bit of cha ching coming in. Cha ching, cha ching. Wait for a few more buses to complete their loops. So I think you make the most money when they get to here, because this is really the end goal for everybody. Is to get to the train station to go to a different city. So they could fully load up there, and then not unload until here. That's the kind of the, the look of the draw. And that's why we need a few more vehicles on this loop. To have a bit more frequency, move a few more passengers. And let's make the big cash. So, is there trains on the way right now? There's a train coming to London, train coming to Birmingham, which will give me the money that I need to buy a few more vehicles. Now, we're still making more money than our expenses, which is important. And where's the, de the vehicle depot over here? Let's try and get ready to buy some vehicles. So, where's the train coming in just there? Okay, perfect. So we'll get ready to buy, let's say, eight vehicles. If possible. Okay, we'll buy six. That's all I can afford. Birmingham loop. And let them do what they've got to do. Let them do what they've got to do. And again, that should then bring more people to the train station. Transport more people in general, thus making us a little bit more cash. Now, there's so much traffic on that bridge right there. That's going to go negatively against us. So we, we're going to need to think about doing multiple bridges. So the London Loop in general, the finances, the expenses have gone sky high. The profit, not so much. Now, I think they're getting too much caught on this bridge. I believe they are, and that's forced them to come down to here to go across. What if I try to get them to go across this bridge? That would be a better option for us, wouldn't it? Because we can avoid this bridge and the traffic it brings. Let's put a stop over here. Yeah. Right, I need I need somebody, guys. Choo choos, can you make that your way in? Now the Birmingham one should be alright. It should be alright. Because of the nature of the city, there's not like a river they got across with limited options. So we should be able to get away with it. You know what I mean? Just hoping though. I might have too many vehicles on the route now thinking about it. Because the expenses are pretty high. The expenses are pretty high. Or I might have put too many vehicles on the route.
Oh no, I think we might have too many vehicles on the routes, guys. Oh no. Do we have too many vehicles on these routes? We might do. I could build a little road connection here just to kind of alleviate some more pressures. No, th there you go. We're making more money than expenses now. So we could be okay still, hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. We definitely need to alleviate some pressure anyway. So let, let me just build an additional street. So if I just connect this down to here. I mean, I could go to there, but I'm not going to delete the building. I'm not saying it's going to help, but it just takes away from it slightly. More expenses than income. Okay, that's shot up again. He is bad, though. It's very bad here. Which makes you wonder, maybe I should move the stop over here. I need to plan it a little bit better. I need to plan those stops in London a little bit better. The Birmingham one's still okay, right? <laughs> yes! Huge revenue coming in. But with that comes huge expenses. But I need to apply the same logic to what I've done to Birmingham. Just widen the areas to avoid a little bit more of the traffic and just giving us greater coverage. That could be placed over here to kind of cover this area. That could be placed over here to cover this area. Thus not using the two middle bridges, which are the most congested. Right, I never wanted a train to arrive at a station as, as much as I do right now. How's our little wood train anyway? You still you still making profit by the way? Yes. So you get a moment where it can do an extra journey in the year. Which works out pretty good for us. So that's making some sweet cash. Right, how much is a bus stop then? Now we've got money coming in. Okay, we can definitely afford that. So, I'm going to place this here. For the coverage around there. Now, that stop there, if I placed it here instead... That still gives the coverage around. But then maybe you also have a stop here. There's a stop there. I have a stop there as well. So it means I'm deleting that one. Right. And then the loop itself managed the line. I'm also deleting this one, by the way. So this line's going to have a, a big transformation. So Albert Road... Then goes to Stanley Road. Where's Stanley Road? Oh, we did go to Stanley Road. So after Albert Road, we then add a st stop for here. And then here. Then after London Road, we add a stop to there. Oh, I don't want it to go across that bridge. So that's where I'm going to have to pull out another stop just here. To add a station just there. So we're going around the outer of it. Which they're all on the cusp. I'm still connecting the centre. Thus I avoid all this big drama traffic. Hopefully. That is the game plan. We basically built the M40, the M25 around London. But in like bus form almost. <laughs> it's like a little mini ring road. 
So that should mean the bushes are more frequent. They're further away. So when they do the this the journey should make more money when you when you think about it because the distances are further away. And we've hopefully avoided the big traffic of London. But that's going to take a while for it to be kind of in full force. Yeah, so we're going to have to take a slight hit on that route until the money comes in. Now, we're still making the most money off our um, passenger route for trains. Uh, if I do it by balance... There we go. Then the then the uh, the wood route, then the Birmingham route. Uh, the London one is taking a hammering right now because we've had to reconfigure it all. So we're just kind of waiting for that right now. Not a fat lot we can do until the route has been circulated a few more times. That's all we can do is play the waiting game. See how congested these two bridges are here. Makes me feel so much better. <laughs> it does make me feel so much better right now. So 2,400 on that bus coming in. What's this next one saying? 2,400. Definitely making a little bit additional cash. Obviously, we are going to caught up on this junction anyway. It's almost like we've inadvertently created like a little roundabout. It's slightly annoying. Slightly annoying. But hey ho, there we go. <laughs> right, train's coming in again. Big stacks. And I was wondering if I can add. An additional carriage to each train. Where's the uh, the other one? Uh, that's going to uh, not the way we want it to go. Can't even afford this one now. Bam! I've had an extra carriage on that one. That's not even full. It it picked up all the people in London. It's not even full. It's a good job it's going to pick up a lot of people in Cambridge. But yeah, we. I, I think I think there's less people here because we're not transporting as many people over here because I've yet to kind of adjust the route slightly. So hopefully more people now start to come in. Still making decent cash. We should see this starting to skyrocket a bit, right? All right, the loop itself, finances. Yeah, the money's creeping back up again. The expenses are high. Don't get me wrong. Wait for the vehicle to go. Nice big chunk of change coming in. So we just got to hope it makes the big dollar bills. There's a few vehicles over here caught. Um, upgrading a road then to a four lane. If I was to upgrade this, it would delete the buildings. Yeah, you, you, we, we're kind of stuck on, on this until we can build more bridges. But at least this, at least this side's not as backlogged. So it should all work out. Anyway, we're breaking even now in this new year. Slightly ahead right now, so we should see the monies rapidly increase. Uh, not that many people to carry back for to Birmingham, but a nice big chunk of change. That train headed back around right 75 people on board. So we're not really maximizing the full potential of that train. But we should do on the way... Oh, no, we're not even going to maximize it on the way back over here as well. We might just need more vehicles on these loops. But I think we don't need, then, to add additional ones in. I think we should now focus on maybe transporting a little bit of cargo. Here, there, and everywhere. And uh, we've got this all up and running. I could maybe upgrade the engine to give us the ability to carry more carriages and more cargo in general. There's a lot on there waiting right now. 
So maybe that's something that we kind of look towards doing. Also, we, we've got to replace the train as well, so we can kind of uh, have it coming more freaking carrying more people. But this is part of the fun. This has been episode two, boys. We've done some good progress. We've added more capacity to the trains. We've increased the amount of capacity and the vehicles on our um, kind of bus routes in our two major cities. We've started our first cargo route, which is going to also eventually expand into our passenger route on the south coast. Next episode then, guys, we'll look towards expanding more into cargo to make more money. So the big money or the money I spent and the pressure I put on this passenger route at the beginning... Would I say that they've paid off at this moment in time? Not yet. Not yet. But, you know, we have got the two biggest cities connected up anyway. We're just going to get more stuff on the run for it. So until next time, guys, I'll see you all soon. So, goodbye.